There's so much to talk about in Loop, which is a short film by Pixar on Disney Plus about an autistic girl, Renee, who is also nonverbal, and a non-autistic boy, Marcus, who need to find a way to communicate as they are together in a canoe. After talking about Float in my last video, I'm really excited to talk about Loop. Enough that I want to revisit it because I don't think I can cover everything I want to and as much depth as I'd like in just one video. In this video, I want to explore how Marcus wasn't presented as a hero. Before I do that, I want to mention a few of my other favorite details that maybe I'll discuss in a future video. For example, I liked that the coach did not overshare. He would have known Renee is autistic, but still didn't share that information with Marcus as it wasn't necessary. You're with Renee today. That girl who doesn't talk? Yeah. She loves canoeing too. Doesn't she always go with you? How, how am I gonna... Just say hi. Marcus not only presumed competence when speaking with Renee, but attempted to share in her experience. And of course, I have to mention the effort Loop made to provide good representation. Working with the Autistic Self Advocacy Network to review the film, getting a mostly non-speaking autistic woman, Miranda, to do the voice, even going to a better environment to record for Miranda. So why is it so important that Loop did nothing to hold Marcus up as if he was going above and beyond? Let me know if you've ever seen a headline like this in the news or shared on social media. High school boy makes autistic girl's day by inviting her to prom. Or person sits down at lunch table with autistic kid. To make this easier to talk about when referring to these stories, I'm just going to say the boy in any of them is named, oh, I don't know, Hero, and the girl with disabilities is Sandy. I also want to mention this definitely happens with other disabilities as well. I'm only focusing on autism because it is what is presented in Loop, and I'm more familiar being autistic myself. I assume the goal of these stories is to provide a break in the constant stream of negative news because, let's be honest, things are getting pretty bad. And I mean, who doesn't like hearing about a random act of kindness? And maybe they will inspire someone else to do good, right? But what if someone joined you for lunch or asked you out to the prom? Would that be newsworthy? I mean, maybe you'd share that on Facebook, but I bet not even your aunt would and definitely not a million others. The reason these stories get shared is because Sandy is on the receiving end. Often there isn't even an interview of Sandy included. There will be an interview with Hero, maybe even a short bit talking to Sandy's mom. So instead of it being a story about Sandy, she becomes a prop, an object. All that matters is how Sandy is treated and not what she thinks or feels. Has Sandy and Hero formed an actual connection? If yes, how is Sandy going to feel about the news on this being broadcasted? If I were Sandy, I think I'd be pretty embarrassed to know everyone was discussing my relationships, especially by people who don't know me. I might worry that Hero just wanted to be nice but wasn't really interested in having a relationship with me, and they could now feel obligated to continue interacting with me. And that's not getting into the more negative side of the internet on these articles. So if it's not about Sandy, what is the news actually about? The implication is that Hero has done something exceptional by treating Sandy like anyone else. But by doing what exactly? Treating Sandy like a human being? This feels so difficult to talk about because I hope when people hear these stories, they are reminded to show kindness to others. I don't think it is wrong to want to share that, and I don't think anyone should feel bad for feeling inspired by them. I'm not here to shame anyone personally. At the same time, there's an important discussion to be had about why these stories garner so much attention. If we want better for disabled people, then shouldn't we consider how Sandy will feel and be impacted? It's important to question what we consider normal currently and how we may contribute to those norms. So what does this have to do with Loop? I guess what I'm struggling with is, is Loop kind of like Hero? Am I so grateful for this film because of how great it is? Or is it that my expectations have been set so low? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe it's both. I want there to be good representation, like I see in Loop, and I want us to have higher standards. Seriously? And I want those standards to be higher with more than representation. We must be better at considering how our decisions, and especially the systems around us, can and will impact those who are already more marginalized. So I guess I find a lot of promise in seeing something like Loop. I just hope it's not a single event. I hope this is a sign that things are changing, that new standards are being applied. Because just like with Hero, what I want to see is for that to not be newsworthy. I don't want Hero to make the news. I just want everyone to treat Sandy the right way. And I don't know how we get there. But I, I think we start by reflecting on these things.
Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like me to be represented more on your newsfeed. And if you'd like to give me some validation, hit the thumbs up. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. I really loved seeing the responses to the float video. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what everyone has to say about this one.